Okay, so today I want to talk about um, a little more about rest and resting your body and the rest diet or the rest protocol. And one of the things that I find hardest to do is rest. Um, so when I was at my sickest, uh, I could not sleep, I could not stop moving. Um, I had akathisha, which is that you constantly pace and pace and pace and you can't sit down. You cannot um, find any rest. Your body is going like a million miles a minute and your brain is going basically in a tornado speed. Everything's at warp speed and you can't stop it. And this happened to me for three years. I could barely sit down. I was exhausted. I was completely and utterly mentally, physically and spiritually exhausted. And one of the things um, about that condition, but about any stress response, is that when your body is sick and when you're chronically ill, um, your body's on high alert. So your neurons are firing, they're on high alert because just like in a flight or fight response, if you see a bear, you see something dangerous, or you feel like you need to run, uh, this activates and kicks in. But when you're chronically ill, it never stops. It continues to go because every time you notice a symptom, feel a symptom, think a symptom, um, your body's on high alert. Like, I'm not better yet. Why aren't I healing? Why is this pain here? Why is um, this happening? And it's circular. And so once your thoughts um, keep scanning everything that's wrong, it continues to think that you're in a fight or flight response constantly. So this is one of the reasons why rest is so important, physical rest, because you're exhausted. You've exhausted your body, that cortisol response and the, all the hormones pumping and everything that it takes to turn on that response is working nonstop. So your, paras um, your sympathetic nervous system is on overdrive. So this is one of the problems with all chronic illness, even when you get to the area of chronic chronic fatigue syndrome and if you say oh but my you know my problem isn't that I'm on overdrive my problem is that I'm so exhausted that I can't get out of bed I can't move I can't lift my head I can barely walk down the street I can't walk to the bathroom that is the same thing it is your flight or fight response has been turned on for so long and it continues to be turned on and now it is completely drained all your energy you have none left you can't even pace you can't even be active you're just completely drained from this response so it's the same thing it's just a different stages so one of the things is you need to physically sit down and physically rest and physically stop exercising and moving and using your energy for anything but healing so that's why people do things like meditation relaxing baths, um, you lie down and you listen to a scripted meditation or a calming, um, you know, a calming CD, uh, music, calm music, um, you know, any kind of tape or script that will get you breathing slowly and listening to your body and relaxing each muscle or sitting in meditation, we're relaxing our thoughts, you know, resting, sleeping, we're turning everything off. So these are ways to access the parasympathetic nervous system, which is what you need for healing. And I know you're thinking, but I am calm, I do meditate, I do rest, I'm in bed, you know, 24 seven and I can't get up. I'm chronically, you know, accessing my parasympathetic nervous system, it's not healing me, but that's because you're not so one of the main things that you need to start to do, and I know I'm really bad for this and I still work at it every day, is your breathing has to be steady and slow. One of the ways and one of the fastest ways you can tell if you are in um, sympathetic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous, nervous system is if how you speak in conversation. So if you're going like this, like, you know, the way regular people talk, and you're talking like this, you're in sympathetic nervous system. You are already activating that stress response. And in normal people, when they talk animated or happy or excited or um, stressed or anything like that, this doesn't activate. 
because they're not chronically ill and their body's not already on high alert. But if you start to talk normally or excited or like this, your body that is already running on high alert picks that up and snowballs it so quick. A person who's normal and who isn't in that state, they just realize that they're just a little bit more on edge, right? Somebody who's already, this is what's happening in your body. Your body is already going. Okay, the fight or fight response system is already activated. It's in a circle. And if you begin to talk faster, it just picks it up. And, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I couldn't get out of bed this morning. I couldn't move. I couldn't even talk or my symptoms are, you know, out of control. And this is why it's because your systems, think of it, it's already going, it's already activated. And it's when you slow it down, that healing can start to take place, but it's always activated if you're chronically ill and you're noticing a symptom, you have a symptom, you're fighting a symptom, anything like this, you can be sure that it's already in motion. Okay. So when you talk fast and you start to get stressed out about something or you're, or you're moving, or you're talking to your kids or your husband, or you're, or you're thinking about things that you need to get done, it is going. Okay. So it's, it's, your body is recognizing that Yes, I am being chased by a tiger. Oh yes, I hear that because it doesn't speak words. It speaks like in a vibration. So it just picks it up and keeps going. So one of the things that you consciously need to do and that I need to do is slow my talking down like this. Now a normal person doesn't talk like this and they don't have sort of a deep, slow talk to their voice all the time. But this is what we need to do if we're feeling any kind of stress or any kind of symptom. Because that helps us slow everything down inside. It is as good as lying down in your bed and actually sleeping, resting, not moving. It's as good as meditating. It's as good as doing these scripts. So just slowing down your voice and slowing down and dropping the tone of your voice. So it's not high pitched like this. It's very low and steady and slow. Now, the other key to doing this is you also have an inner dialogue going at all times. And I can guarantee you that your inner dialogue is probably going fast and high and and non-stop and you also as much as you have to try and practice slowing down your outer voice and your outer tone you have to drop the tone in your head and you have to drop the the speed in which your inner voice is talking so slow it down you don't even need to change what you're saying at this point although that's helpful if you're changing negative to positive but we can talk about that later but it's just slowing down the speed of the negative spiral and the speed at which you speak to yourself and the tone in which you speak to yourself. So we want a tone similar to this. It's calm, it's relaxing, sort of a nighttime voice, a very quiet voice, you know, if you were going to be talking to a baby or a child who doesn't speak English or you're in another country and you're trying to calm somebody down who has no idea what you're saying because they speak a different language or an animal who's just hurt itself, a bird on your deck or something, something that's hurt itself and you've got to go up to it and get it to trust you, you would need to speak so calmly and you would say, hi, hi, little bird. There, I'm not going to hurt you. It has no idea what you're saying, but yet it feels the calm presence. You're bringing, to, you wouldn't say, hi, little bird, let me help you. I'm going to pick, pick you up. And, you know, that bird would be scattered. You would have to go slowly and calmly. Hi, it's okay. I'm here to help you. I'm just going to slowly pick you up. You don't need to worry. These are ways that we would talk to calm something else. And this is what we need to do to our bodies. So not only do we need to actually rest, actually slow down our breathing, actually meditate, actually get into a bath, 
actually do all these physical things that calm us, but we need to drop our voice and drop the voice, our internal voice. And I guarantee this will help you stay and activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the only system that we can heal from. So a lot of people think, well, if I'm awake, I can't heal. I can only be asleep to activate the system. But that's not true. We can access these, um, that symptom by meditating, by having a bath, by complete resting. But if you're lying down resting and your thoughts and your inner dialogue and you're not speaking and you're so calm and you're so still and your eyes are closed, but your inner voice is going and activating, it's, it's activating the snowball. So you're not in that system. You actually have to drop the thoughts and drop the speed at which you're talking to yourself. So this is key. Sometimes you think you're resting or you think you're meditating or you think you're sleeping, but you're not. You haven't activated that system. So even at night when you have insomnia, when things are going wrong, it's probably that inner dialogue and you're like, but I'm, I'm resting here. It's that inner dialogue that's talking, that's thinking rapidly. And that is what we need to slow down. So I hope this has been helpful. Remember, rest is not just physical, but it's mental. And it's speaking externally, speaking internally, as well as everything else. So practice, practice that and see how it goes. I think it will help you.